I'm not sure that everyone fully appreciates the role of the the liver. How would you sort of go about summarizing in, I guess, in lay terms? If someone said to you at dinner, Rick, tell me about how is the liver involved in in sort of the management of glucose and, and fats or glucose and lipid metabolism? Well, they, you know, the, the liver is the first main organ that when we eat food, the, the nutrients go into the liver. And this is the place where a lot of the processing of protein and fats uh, is is occurring. And the, so the liver has really been always recognized as the metabolic organ. And it's, uh, it's the main organ that creates ketones and it does a lot of the gluconeogenesis that produce glucose. It's really involved in many metabolic pathways. And when we give fructose, we, we see reductions of ATP not just in the liver, but we see it in the brain and we see it in the kidney and we see it in the vasculature. So for sure, the fructose pathway is working through all of these different places and probably is important in all those different places. But the reason we think that it is the liver is, is the king is because uh, we, we did a study where we knocked out fructose metabolism in the intestine, the brain and the liver. And so we had animals that could metabolize fructose everywhere except the liver, for example. And when we did that, we found that we could block not just fatty liver, if we gave them fructose, they, you know, the ones that could not metabolize fructose in their liver were protected from fatty liver, but they were protected from insulin resistance. And then interestingly, they were pr- protected from weight gain and they were protected from fat accumulation in their adipose tissue. So it was kind of a strange finding where just blocking in the liver could affect weight and adipose tissue. And, and, it, and it kept the animals leptin sensitive. When we studied the, the leptin resistance, which is w- what drives people to eat more, it's due to a problem in the hypothalamus of the brain where they get inflammation up there. But if you knock out the, the fructose metabolism, the liver, they don't get the inflammation in the brain. So there's some kind of liver brain communication that's involved in f- how fructose works. And if you block fructose metabolism in the liver, you get benefits above and beyond the liver. You get, they, they, you end up regulating your intake, food intake, and maybe that has a role in preventing f- fat and weight gain. Um, and you, you prevent uh, insulin resistance from developing. Um, and so, yeah, I think the liver is really a major, a major site f- for the metabolic syndrome. And um, it may not be the only site. We know that there are things going on in all, other tissues, but uh, it's, it's like the king. <laughs> right. You mentioned insulin resistance there. Is it the accumulation of, of liver fat or hepatic fat, what that's primarily driving insulin resistance in the liver? I don't really know um, because they tend to go together. And, and, you know, the fact that saturated fats can increase liver fat and cause mild insulin resistance, you know, is another thing that kind of links the two. It's very hard to separate it. There's evidence that it's linked with oxidative stress to the mitochondria in both situations. So there may be like a common pathway till the, till the very end, you know, Mm -hmm. so uh, where they separate, I think that we should view the two as being intricately linked. (laughs) Yeah. I guess when I think of the liver and its involvement in sort of glucose homeostasis, I often think of an analogy to do with the bathtub. Uh, I'll share it with you and you can tell me what you think of it. And you may have heard this before, sort of you you can imagine a bathtub and and the tap is the liver and when it's running that sort of glucose going into the the blood and which uh into the the sort of water building up in the bathtub that's the blood in that's the glucose in the bloodstream and the drain at the bottom of the bathtub is muscle it could be other cells but so glucose can sort of build up in that bathtub which in this analogy is is water if either the tap is unable to be turned off Um, which is at the side of the liver, or the drain cannot be opened, which is at the side of the muscle. That's great. Yeah, it's absolutely true. You know, uh, we were doing some studies and, you know, clearly in, in, in diabetes, the uric acid seems to have a role 
in driving the gluconeogenesis, the production and release of glucose from the liver is being driven a little bit by the, by the uric acid. And, but it, there's also another uh, player. And the third player is that in metabolic syndrome, not only is there, you know, you've got this uh, resistance, you know, the, the muscle's not taking up the glucose and there's more coming out from the liver, but also um, the insulin release from the pancreas starts off being to compensate, you know, yeah goes up and up to try to compensate. But over time, the islets in the pancreas that make insulin get weathered down. And uh, they, they, there's oxidative stress going on in the islets and they, there's a, a loss of the uh, insulin secretion and there's some scarring in there. And, you know, we've, we've shown that fructose can do that. So if we fed like a, in that study, where we gave sugar to rats that was on, on a caloric restriction, uh, we could show that there was actually um, that the sugar, high sugar fed animals were developing islet dysfunction. But again, remember that was a four month study in a rat. So that's, you know, it would be like a long study in a human, but, and that hasn't been done. 